Hello and welcome to Smart Karma Corporate Webinar. I am Vidhi Bhatt from the Corporate Solutions team at Smart Karma. We are very glad to have with us today CordLife, Cordlife Group's CEO, Poland Tan, and the group's CFO, Boon Yong Cho. We will start this webinar with Boon Yong walking us through a company presentation, after which he and Polan will engage in a fireside conversation uh, with Smart Karma Insight provider, Chris Wang. We will be taking live Q&A from our audience, so I would like to request our attendees to post their questions in the Q&A tab uh, in the bottom of your screen. Uh, during this webinar, I will also be sharing some links on how you can connect with God Life as well as with Chris on the Smart Karma platform. So please keep a lookout for messages in your chat box. With this, I would like to hand it over to Bunyong to take the webinar forward. Over to you, Bunyong. Thank you, Viti. Yeah, and thanks uh, Smart Karma for giving us the opportunity to give this presentation. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, let me give a, a quick introduction of uh, Cod Life. Are you able to uh, see the slides and hear me clearly? Good. Our disclaimer for this presentation. This is what we are going to cover this evening about Cod Life, who we are and what we do a business overview, a quick overview of our product and services and where we are and how we are doing in each market, growth strategies, what are our main growth drivers, lastly, financial overview, a summary of a nine-month trip queue, uh, results and stock data. About Cod Life, our vision, we help people live healthier, happier and longer. And we focus currently on safeguarding the well-being of the mother and child segment. Some quick facts. We were founded in Singapore in 2001, and we are celebrating our 20th birthday this year. Listed on XJet's main board in 2012, operating in 11 countries and still growing, seven facilities in six countries, and all our facilities are AABP accredited. So AABP stands for Advancement of Blood and Biotherapies, and it is considered as a gold standard for accreditations of blood banks. Out of the seven facilities, two facilities are FAC accredited, and three facilities are CAP accredited. FAC stands for Foundations for the Accreditations of Cellular Therapy, a global standard for top quality patient care in cellular therapies. CAP stands for College of American Pathologists, Again, another top quality standards for laboratories. Last but not least, we are trusted by over 550,000 parents in Asia because they have entrusted their child's precious cup that we must. Our operating segments, we broadly classify our business into four operating segments, banking, diagnostics, digital healthcare, and other pieces. The biggest operating segment is banking. These are the six products that we store, and the main products are cord blood, cord lining, cord tissue. As we normally store them in, uh, in blood or tissue form rather than cell form. When we talk about cord blood, cord lining, or cord tissue banking, we are in fact talking about stem cell banking, as cord blood, cord lining, and cord tissues contain rich sources of stem cells. So what are stem cells? Simply. Stem cells are the body's raw materials, undifferentiated cells from which all other cells which with specialized functions are generated. So given their features, these stem cells may be used for repair, replace, or renew of our damaged or diseased tissues. This area of cellular therapy or regenerative medicines is evolving and may be applied later for the treatment of various diseases. Let's look at our other operating segments. The circles in orange are diagnostic products and services. The key products are NIPT, non-invasive predator testing, newborn metabolic screening, and a newborn genetic screening. NIPT is a screening test to detect the risk of fetal chromosomal abnormalities. For example, like trisomy 21, which is commonly known as a Down syndrome, 
This test is normally recommended for pregnant mothers in the high-risk group from as early as maybe nine to 10 weeks of pregnancies, but it's normally administered in their second trimester. Newborn metabolic screening is a test to screen the babies for any inborn metabolic disorders. Newborn genetic screening is a test on cord blood to see whether the baby is predisposed to any genetic diseases. Under digital healthcare, we have Mouse Up, which is a, our one-stop platform to provide localized advice to women on conceiving, pregnancy, and uh, parenting. We have rolled out Mouse Up in uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines. And we will be rolling out in all the markets that we operate. Under others, we have Life Sprouts, which is a concept which is a concept you need to meet health, wellness, and lifestyles, as well as increase client engagement. So one of the activities is the conduct of uh, prenatal classes for expectant mothers. Where we are, what we do, and how we do in each market. We are currently operating in 11 countries. Six countries, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, India and Hong Kong, where we have our local teams and facilities. Four countries, Vietnam, Myanmar, Brunei, and Bangladesh, where we work with the marketing agents to collect the samples locally and ship the samples to our facilities for the processing and storage. An associate company in Thailand, the company has a local team and facility managed by our joint venture partner. This, in fact, makes us the having the largest network of cop blood banks in Asia. In the six countries where we have the local teams and facilities, we are the market leader in four countries, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, and Hong Kong, and among the top three in the remaining two. These are our core team members of Cop Life. On the left side, we have the senior management team, which has responsibilities over the operations of the group. Here you'll find Roland and I, and the other senior management members. The senior management team is located in Singapore, which is our headquarter. On the right side, we have our medical and technical team. And these are the team of experts, which make sure that we meet the best international standards in whatever we do. And below we have our country heads who are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations in their respective countries. Although we operate in six countries, we make sure that we work together as a team. Uh, we'll explore cross selling opportunities and in sourcing our resources among the countries. But more importantly, we make sure that all our countries adhere to the same high quality standards of the group. Quality. Quality is the uh, cornerstone of any healthcare company. For us, we make sure that uh, we our facilities and processes adhere to the highest industry standards. As mentioned earlier, all our seven facilities in six countries are ADB accredited, of which two have FAT accreditations and three have CAP accreditations. I think the high quality standards are important to provide family with a peace of mind uh, as they have entrusted their children's precious cord blood and cord tissue to us. And we want to make sure that uh, this precious cord blood and cord tissues are kept in good conditions and are ready to be used when the need arises. A quick overview of the key milestones over the uh, 20 years. Uh, we set up our cord blood bank in Singapore in 2001. And over the years, we have expanded to five more countries. Hong Kong in 2005, Indonesia in 2007, India in 2008 and Philippines in 2009. And we acquired STEM Life in Malaysia in 2015 and Health Baby in 2018. At the same time, we continue to broaden, to expand our products and services. We launched Cod Lining Banking in Hong Kong in 2009 and rolled out the product to all our markets by 2014. In the diagnostic space, we launched our first diagnostic product in uh, Metascreen in 2014 and added on more diagnostic services 
uh, for the family over the years. And some of you may know this year, you know, uh, we formally launched OptiQ, uh, which is the uh, Asia first corneal lenticular lenticule banking, and also partner with Duke NUS in Singapore uh, on the clinical trial of uh, top blood expansion. Growth strategies, like our past 20 years, we have continued to grow organically and uh, via m &A, uh, mergers and acquisitions. Here we have set out the five engines driving our organic growth, increased penetrations and our market share. In the emerging markets that we operate, uh, the penetration rate is extremely low. And we think that there will be scope for growth as we step up the awareness of stem cell banking in these markets. Increase product scope, we'll continue to add more product and services to meet the healthcare needs of our clients and their broader families. Open new markets, we will explore setting up facilities in new markets whenever the markets and regulatory conditions are ready. Facilitate development of stem cells ecosystems. We are proactively working with doctors and hospitals in our, in our key markets to encourage the utilizations of stem cells. You know, we have a uh, partner with McCarthy Mac in Philippines and UNUS in Singapore on clinical trials of uh, stem cells therapies. And we believe that these clinical trials will increase the awareness of the usefulness of stem cells and the need of our stem cells uh, banking services. Lastly, create new engines of growth. We are always constantly exploring new areas in the healthcare sector that are synergistic to our business. For m and we always be looking out for targets in Asia that are synergistic to our current business and add to our earnings. Quick summary of our financials, uh, 3Q2021. Uh, this year, we have achieved three consecutive quarters of revenue growth. In 3Q2021, our revenue was 8.9% higher than the quarter last year. We also managed to keep our gross profit and operating profits margins up uh, with cost saving measures, both at the cost of sales and the operating expenses level. Our 3Q 2021 net profit was lower than the quarter last year because of lower government grants recognized in this quarter. For nine months 2021, our revenue was marginally lower by 5.4% uh, compared to last year's. As we were impacted by COVID-19 in all our three quarters this year, I like last year's where we had a relatively normal first quarter. So this resulted in uh, for nine months 2021 in lower new stem cells banking samples, process, and stock. However, we managed to buffer this uh, lower banking revenue with higher revenue contributions from diagnostic services. Similar to 3Q 2021, we have kept our gross profit and operating profits margin steady with cost-saving measures. Lastly, uh, let's have a look at our stocks, data, and uh, substantial shareholders. Our share price at last Friday closing was 39 cents. Uh, at this price, our market cap was close to 100 million uh, sing dollars and the PE was 50.2 times. We pay a final dividend of 0.9 cents uh, per share for FY 2020, which translated to a dividend yield of about 2.3%. Uh, we have currently four substantial shareholders. Uh, Trans Global Real Estate Group is our new substantial shareholder, which bought over the shares, uh, entire shareholding from uh, Sincere View and Fude, controlled by Hong Kong businessman Mr. Hong Kok Young. We understand that they are in the real estate business. Nanjing Xinjie Co is a, com is a listed company on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. They are involved in the healthcare and retail business, and they operate a uh, co blood bank in Shandong, China. Next. Global Corp Black Corporations is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. They are the largest Corp Black banks in China and operate Corp Black banks in Beijing, Zhejiang, and Guang, Guangdong. And the last substantial shareholder is the Robust Plan Limited, which we understand is controlled by Mr. Li Fu and affiliated with the uh, Tianjin Corp Black Bank in uh, China.
Okay, thank you. Uh, I shall now hand the time to Chris. Thank you so much, Won Yong, for your presentation. Now let's start the fire chart directly. The first question is, in the first nine months of 2021, Cold Life's revenue was down about 5% young year. The gross profit was down about 3% young year. The net profit was down about 15% young year. The COVID-19 is the major reason. So when do you think that Cold Life could be fully recovered from the pandemic? And uh, what is your outlook for the next year? Okay. Thank you, Chris. Uh, perhaps I'll take the question and give Buyong a little bit of rest and recover from the presentation. Um, actually, it's true. Uh, primarily, our numbers uh, this year has been actually attributed to the impact of COVID-19. But if I may uh, just highlight what earlier Buyong had said. Last year, actually, while we have the COVID-19 has started and we start to feel the impact, actually, we have a regular good first quarter, uh, the impact in our operating countries actually didn't start to kind of like the, the lockdown, the restriction in movement didn't happen for a lot of our operating country until sometime end of March or early April. So technically what has happened is that, you know, first quarter was a usual good quarter for us uh, last year. So that's then the second quarter, that's when we start to feel the impact uh, what you have noticed is that actually we, we believe it is now uh, trending, the control of the situation of uh, the impact of, of COVID is getting sort of like a better control. I think the reduced infection and the high vaccination rate in all the operating countries, we are starting to see that it's bottom out. And in fact, we are starting to see the growth again. It is... I wouldn't say as of right now, we have fully recovered. I'll be very candid and say no, but we are trending it in the way we expect. And we are kind of like very excited and looking forward to the new year because we believe that with the better control of the infection and where people get used to the idea of living with this so-called flu, um, borders starts to open people starts to go out, uh, things starts to happen. And that's where I, uh, we're all very excited. Uh, take for instance, like uh, I, um, in, in a way with COVID-19, what has happened is that we, in our business, we normally do a lot of signups and conversion of meeting our clients through face-to-face. -face. Uh, big events like expos, big events like uh, uh, antenatal class, visiting the doctors at the clinic, visiting the mom. That has been our traditional way of getting business, talking to clients. Uh, with COVID-19, with all the restrictions, that has been postponed and that has been cancelled. Uh, hospitals didn't quite allow, in some of the places, didn't allow us to go in. We can't go to the doctor's clinic to speak to the pregnant mom. So that has impacted us last year. We pivoted. We went online. Uh, we conducted seminars online, webinars, like what we are doing right now. We do a lot of these activities online. Whenever it's possible, we have small groups that can factor in classes that, you know, like in Singapore, no more than eight couples at one stage. So we were doing a lot of all those activities. Now, the, the situation is slowly opening. Uh, and that's why we were all very excited because that means that when we move forward next year, we will be able to use a hybrid system now. We have the capability of doing online conversion, but we also have the face-to-face the, the -face activities that can happen. Uh, take for instance, those of us who are in Singapore right now, we know that just last week, we have the, the food expo. There is an expo that is happening in, in, uh, in Singapore and everybody is very excited. And we are also very excited because that means that our baby expo that normally you have in Changi Expo, there is a possibility coming back. And that would mean that we, we are able to assess this client again. Uh, so Chris, we are very excited. It is trending the way we are. Uh, of course, there may be a recurrence. Uh, unfortunately, we see, we see that in Europe, there has been spike again and everybody got a little bit concerned and lockdown starts to happen. But in a way, we are now in that sweet spot where if it does happen in any of our operating countries, 
we have all the system in place already to make sure that the online conversion, the contact with our clients is still possible. Yes. So yes, we're looking forward to the new year. And as countries starts to open up, uh, take for instance, like Singapore with this uh, opening easing of measures, and we are very excited uh, in Hong Kong, for instance. I think there is this discussion of open border with uh, Shenzhen and possibly hopefully Guangzhou, because that will mean that that will also open the other market. Uh, uh, and Singapore and Hong Kong is our so-called top, mark, top uh, revenue contributors and our biggest market share, yes. Thank you, Paula. Yes. The next question is, currently, Code Life mainly has banking services, diagnostics, and uh, digital healthcare. So which service do you think has the highest growth potential? And uh, why is that? Okay, I, I would probably, all three, I, uh, I'm a little bit greedy, I would like to say, and this is how we push our country heads also. Why we say is that all three has good potential for us. One is that we started as Cod Blood Banking, uh, Bunyong had said, that's how we started in 2001. Uh, we focused on Cod Blood Banking and through the years, we expanded on storing uh, cord tissue, cord lining. So that is like we are uh, so-called a banking services, a cryopreservation. Uh, why we, we believe that it, there is still huge potential in that? Two factors. One is with regards to the, the cord blood banking business, as in relating to deliveries. Many of you would probably ask me, you know, and say, oh, but number of deliveries everywhere is dropping. Would that impact your business, you know? Uh, I would say not really. Why I say that is that although the number of deliveries worldwide is dropping, it is counteracted by the number of rising media class spending. And that number, that's our target market. Uh, people who can afford so-called private banking. Uh, we, we call our so-called like a private banking where they, they pay for us. So, so in a way, it's not, there, there is still that room. And like Bunyong mentioned in his presentation, the penetration rate in many of the countries, you know, are still very low. Uh, people are, we, we still need to reach out and there's still that huge potential. And we all know that if let's say it's the middle income family who will have kids, that means they are more open to buying more services for their child. Each child is precious, so they will buy. So I believe Cod Blood Banking, it, although it start, we started as that, banking services would still be a, a huge room for us to grow that, that high potential. Then the other thing that we have been doing, uh, you see it this year, uh, we extend cryopreservation. We are the expert. We are so familiar with collecting, processing, storing human tissue, so to speak, or human uh, uh, cord blood. Um, so why can't we store other parts of the human body? Uh, anything that we can actually use potentially can be used in the future. And that's the reason why we started OptiQ this year. We are moving towards not just cryopreservation of cord blood, cord lining, cord tissue. You do other possibilities. So there is this two, two levers, so to speak. Cord blood banking growing because the penetration rate is low. And then the cord blood uh, the, the banking business where we can cryo preserve other things, you know, other human tissue, uh, human products. So that caught the bank. Then we went into diagnostics. Um, Bunyong mentioned we went into diagnostic testing services in 2014 when we offer MetaScreen. Uh, it was probably in about 2019, we stepped on the gas. We stepped on the gas pedal and wanted to really grow diagnostics. Why? because of the huge potential there. The reason is that we already know, we are so familiar with the ONGs, the doctors. Uh, we are very strong in our consumer marketing, so to speak, where we actually reach out to mothers to, to tell them about the benefits of cord blood banking. We leverage on that. We wanted to leverage on that. And then to actually now introduce more services 
why should we not why don't we take advantage of that introduce more services for the mother introduce more services for the child okay. then the other thing which we started looking seriously at also and you notice that our mission has changed in 2019 20, uh, we we actually want to help people live healthier live happier live longer okay that's that's without a doubt. Uh, you you want to be healthier before you live longer. I think we all we all agree to that. So one of the things that we wanted is that okay, right now we have one mother who agrees to store the baby's cord blood with us. Okay, this mother maybe bring in some testing for the child, but I think a a, a model that we always talked about. Actually, and I, I really like to, to work on this with the team is, is that one two four model. You have one child, two parents, but four grandparents. I think they use that quite common also in China, the one two four, you know. So a mother who introduced, who, who subscribed to our service, you know, now we are selling the service to her. We are also selling the services to the child. But what about the extended family? Can we bring in more tests? You know, more tests to, to, to include the father. Can we bring more tests to include the grandparents? You know, so, so that's where we say that we want to leverage on that and go to the one to four. Uh, and that's where the potential of, of diagnostic for us. We, we are not doing the bread and butter, like, you know, your, your full blood cow testing, uh, because that is a very competitive market. But we are actually niching into a lot of the genetic screening part. Okay, then the third piece. Okay, the third piece. Uh, I must admit we are just stepping, getting our feet wet into it, which is actually the Mums Up Digital Healthcare app. Okay, uh, what why we wanted is like Bunyong mentioned, we have five hundred and fifty parents who are entrusted. That means we have close to two hundred thousand over more than that cord blood units that is stocked with us. Question I have is that, and I tell the team, right now we set up this app. We are using it to reach out to the mothers. We are reaching it to reach out to women who are thinking of getting pregnant, you know, uh, and they maybe go in and check out what to look at and all that. So we are, right now our app is very targeted, okay, at women who are planning to get pregnant or women who have conceived you know, during their whole uh, nine months of pregnancy and women with young children up to six years old. Um, that's what our app is looking at right now, very content driven. But we want to build this up and our plan is that with the app, we will be able to extract the lifetime revenue, lifetime uh, value from this client because as the women get older, as the kids get older, and this is where we will pull in our diagnostics. We want to leverage on that going in to, to, to actually introduce them to more services, to the husband, to herself as she gets older, as she moves towards menopause, you know, as the kids get older. And then the next step is her husband and her extended, her, her in-laws and her grandparents and the whole family itself. And that's the leverage. And we, we believe that, you know, with time, we will be able to extract the revenue and have that to be the other piece. That's why we are very clear. We have this three channel while um, uh, uh, core is still banking. Diagnostic, it's growing, it's trending nicely. You know, we have uh, double digit growth year on year. Uh, and then with the digital healthcare piece, which is a start, but we believe in that potential of it. That's why, Chris, if you ask me which one, uh, I would probably, I want to be greedy and say all, <laughs> because we do believe that there is this potential. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Paula. The next question is, looking forward, what is your future plan for growing your business? Okay. What areas would you consider to enter? Okay. And how would these new business have synergies with your current services? Um, Bunyong has mentioned earlier in that slide on growth strategy, uh, there are a few, and, and that for us is very clear. I think the first couple in terms of increasing penetration rate, like we said, we, we are not, we're not there, there is so much potential. There is, the middle class is growing, the penetration rate is low, we can certainly push a lot on that. So that, that will be the strategy, bringing more services, 
middle class is growing, so each child is precious, parents will be willing to, to buy more services. I think what I would like to highlight is that what are the two, uh, uh, the, the, the footfall? We all know we are in all these countries, very Southeast Asia. Uh, perhaps India, we will count India, although India is not really Southeast Asia. But there are still many countries in Asia that we didn't quite cover yet. Uh, the Mekong Delta countries. We have, agent, we have agents there bringing in, and that's the other growing market. So certainly we want to expand our footfall. And that's how Court Life has been growing. We normally go in as a marketing agent uh, or, or bringing services to, to store, let's say in Singapore. Take for instance, like Vietnam, uh, the storage is actually stored in Singapore. Once we go into a country, better understand the legal framework, better understand the consumer there. That's when we started to plan that, you know, uh, going into, into that country itself. And um, um, my, okay, if, if I may, I've always come from healthcare. Uh, I've always worked in healthcare, uh, although more in the hospital side. My belief has always been healthcare should be in the country, by the country, for the country people. So, so that's always that modest operandi that we want to go into the country to grow that business. And once it's there, grow it because no one knows the country people regulation better than the local. And that's how we wanted to sort of like push uh, with regards to growing our business. Um, one of the things that you've noticed uh, and Buyo brought it up is the ecosystem. Okay, um, Core Blood Banking, when we started, it's a very almost like you buy the service, but you hope you never got to use it. You don't need it. It's almost like you buy insurance. You hope you don't need to use it. And that's how the modus operandi in the early years has been. You know, there are these pediatric conditions uh, that you could use this cord blood for. Uh, um, and, and we have kind of like worked on the basis that let's grow the business by getting more people to stop. In the last few years, we have also add on one more angle. We want to be part of the ecosystem to encourage usage of this stem cell. Uh, stem cell sometimes is with some people, it's some, especially government, I think they're sometimes a little bit cautious about it. We, and we can understand why, you know. Uh, 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 so, so different countries have legal framework, different legal framework. So, so there sometimes is that concern. Uh, um, one, but there is a lot of clinical trials going on. Uh, right now, the standard treatment, yes, is that AT condition, but the, the, the trials that is going on that, that could be used for so many other things. And that's the reason why in the last few years, we, we wanted to be part of that ecosystem. How can we utilize usage of stem cell? So like Bunyo mentioned earlier too, Makati Med, we tie in with Makati Med in Philippines. They are using the expanded stem cell in diabetic wounds. Uh, and we know that in many countries, in a lot uh, of countries, there is you, a lot of using of that for diabetic wounds. And many of us know, let's say it's like in Singapore, it's one, despite everything else, our, uh, our diabetes level is still, the incidence of diabetes is still very high in, in Singapore, for instance. So, so what happens is that uh, we are involved in that. We, we want to be part of it. Um, then the other thing that we have uh, like mentioned before, um, we are tying in with uh, um, UNUS in the clinical trials on, on expansion of cord blood to get more stem cells from there so that you can actually possibly use to treat adults. Yeah, you grow the stem cells to possibly treat adults and not limited by, cho by to children only. And the other thing that I am... To me, I'm very excited about because I have worked with kids with autism before. And uh, two years ago, we started with KKH. This is the children's hospital in, in, in Singapore for those who, of you who are not familiar. Uh, they have an autism trial where they actually have uh, um, used cord blood to see how it is that you can infuse into the child and, and monitor whether there is any improvement. It's a small trial. 20 subjects only, it's still in the middle of a trial, but we are very excited that 14 of the subjects came from Cod Life. Uh, and and, and that's, those are the things that we, we want to be involved uh, because 
there is so much potential. And what we are storing, what we are telling mom is that you are storing something that actually need not necessarily be only for the child. If it's a diabetic wound, we all know the risk of diabetes goes up with, with age. You know, having diabetic wound is not uncommon among people with diabetes. So, so that, that possibility is there. And that's the reason why, um, that's the angle that we want to sort of like grow, the growth strategy and, and all. Um, then, of course, the last piece is I mentioned before, we are just getting our foot wet with the mom's up at. But if I can get all my mothers to sign on and they stay with us, and we can extract the lifetime revenue, lifetime value from them, so to speak, you know, getting them to be so-called hooked to us, and then you know, follow us in that trend. I, I always like to think that we don't want to just know the mom when the mom deliver. Can we know the mom? before she deliver, after she deliver, when the child is growing up, when she is getting older and then get to know the family and be with the family in terms of this whole network. That's how we hope to grow the company. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paula. Yeah. The next question is, the discussions about the proposal for a statutory merger was the first and the largest cold blood bank in China the Global Cod Blood Corporation last June, has been mutually agreed to discontinue in February this year. So what is the reason of the discontinuation? And uh, what is your future strategy in China market? Will you, you want to take that? Yes. Yeah, so I will take this question. Uh, I think first, you know, uh, we want to say that you know, we are interested in China. And uh, we think that this is actually a win-win because uh, uh, between this uh, GCBC or uh, Global Cod Blood Bank uh, corporations and uh, Cod Life, because uh, GCBC is the uh, largest Cod Blood Bank in China, and we are the largest uh, in Asia outside of China. So uh, we feel that this is actually a win uh, uh, collaborations. Uh, so, uh, but you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, during our discussions, uh, we have to consider the uh, regulatory challenges to close the transactions. And we see that because uh, GCBC is listed on the New York Stock Exchange, we are listed in Singapore uh, on XGX, and we see that there are going to be uh, uh, regulatory challenges in closing these uh, transactions. Also, you know, uh, we understand that uh, GCBC was uh, facing lawsuits you know, from some of the minority shareholders because they are unhappy with these uh, transactions. So after considering all these factors, uh, we decided uh, to mutually, you know, terminate this uh, uh, discussions on the uh, statutory merger. But, you know, uh, notwithstanding, uh, we remain uh, interested in the uh, China market. But, you know, we also need to understand that the China market is actually a very heavy regulated market. Uh, and uh, the market is currently uh, governed by licenses. And what we understand is that the uh, foreign investors like us may not be able to acquire a license. And the Chinese government, uh, as what we understand also, is also not giving up uh, new licenses. And that's also one reason why we thought, you know, that the uh, collaborations or the merger with the GCBC uh, may be actually an avenue for us to enter the China market. However, you know, uh, now, you know, uh, we have already you know, terminated the discussion with GCBC, but we continue to monitor uh, the Chinese market closely, and we will continue to explore to see uh, whether there are any opportunities that, that we can uh, uh, take on you know, uh, in China, uh, either you know, with the uh, existing players in China, or you know, maybe uh, there will be a change in the regulatory uh, reg uh, framework uh, in China. So this is a market that we are interested, and we are continuing to monitor closely for potential uh, opportunities. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Thank you, Bo Yun. The next question is, who are your biggest competitors? And uh, what do you do differently compared with them? Okay, I, I will take that question. Our competitor, I think with, uh, uh, let's, let's talk about our, let's say in Singapore. Singapore is our biggest market. Um, uh, in terms of uh, revenue contribution. Um, 
yes, number of deliveries is actually very low in, in uh, Singapore. I mean, we all know less than 40,000. Uh, and uh, basically, and the strange, but the, and the strange thing is that we have called four cord blood bank. For a country this small, we have four cord blood bank. If I may, let's say it's in China, they have seven cord blood banks. Uh, so, so that is that disproportion. But we're market leader here. We're market leader here. There are a few factors that I feel that it's important to highlight as our competitive advantage over a lot of our competitors. Uh, one of the things is that um, I think some banks, some of our competitors have some of it, not all of it. And I will be proud to say that many of this we have. One of the biggest thing is that actually we have a good network, a wide network. Uh, basically, that means we, you know that we are in Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, India, and uh, uh, Indonesia. Actually, one of the things and why we are also very interested in China. Okay, Why? Because I will tell you very simply, we're in India, we are very comfortable there. Of course, the next thing we want is to go to the other big populous uh, 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 country. So, so in that sense, we're always on that lookout. We have a wide network. And one of the things with regards to cord blood bank, with regards to matching, and one of the good things is actually you want to have a widespread of, I call, I cannot, I have always pro problem pronouncing that word, ethnicity, ethnicity. That means that actually you have the Oriental, you have the Caucasians and all that. So we have the Indian, we have the Indian uh, uh, Kobla banking, you have the Southeast Asians, like many of us in Singapore, let's say it's predominantly Chinese, but we have the Malays. The Indian. So what we're saying is that there is a lot of this mix. So this huge network, this huge network, that's actually very critical uh, I, uh, for in terms of storage of cord blood and stem cell. That's one thing. But on a very practical sense, okay, I will tell you a good example. During COVID, we have all the restriction, right? Because you can't fly in and out. But what happens is that we were able to fly samples that people wants to store in Singapore from Vietnam, but because there were limited flights, we store, we flew that samples and store in Hong Kong because flights were available. So, so that network. And then take for instance in Philippines. Philippines, when they have the restriction, they didn't even just block international. They even block local. Cebu and Davao cannot fly to Manila where our bank is. Then what happens? They, we flew them to Singapore. So this was the network that I feel from a very simple practical sense of point that you actually can get this assess, even though in a pandemic situation with restriction. And I think this huge network is an advantage. Then the second piece, of course, is quality. Uh, you know that, and, and we could do all this network and we could fly this and stop. It's because everyone, our customer knows, our client knows the quality is the same. We have all the international accreditation. And one of the things that in the last few years, we make sure that every of our bank gets international accreditation because we feel in healthcare, it's very important uh, to use the thing that it's not enough just to have the local accreditation. Uh, uh, and we felt that international accreditation is important because clients are getting more savvy. They Google, they find out information and all. And, and that's the reason why international accreditation is, is important. Uh, sometimes I believe that, you know, it's, it's like what we always say in Singapore, we shouldn't just own self, check own self. We should have outside people coming in to check that our systems, everything is in place. And that's, that's one of the things. The third and very important thing, which to me is very important, our financials. We are very transparent. We are also quite solid. Uh, one thing that people must realize, we store your cord blood for a long period of time. In Singapore, it's 21 years. You got to make sure your company is sustainable because you are asking someone to look after the child's cord blood, cord, all the stem cells and cord tissue. So the company needs to be very, very sustainable that 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, if I need it, it's there. And I think I am, I am very proud to say that 
we are transparent, you know, especially being listed. I think sometimes being listed is a double edged sword. Well, in a way, it's, it's good. In, in a way, it's good because people can see how it is. There is a lot of regulations, a lot of things to follow, but it's also good because that means the company is sustainable. If you store your cord blood with us in Singapore right now, you would know that, you know, you want to have the assurance that we are going to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so so I, I hope that that kind of like, you know, give the idea, but some countries we are the market leader, uh, which you are happy. And we always say just because you're a market leader doesn't mean you stop. You must maintain your position. Uh, the other country, we still have hate groups. Yes. Okay, thank you so much for that. So the next question is, what else would you like to highlight to the investors? Um, I, would, I will work on the premise that uh, there is going back to our mission. We want to help people live healthier, happier and longer. And the company needs to be sustainable. We need to, how it is that we can utilize a lot of this themselves. It is not right now, while the standard treatment is for using pediatric cancers for the kids, but looking at the amount of clinical trials, the utilization of it, it will be a matter of time before more and more of this will be used. We all know like some of these stem cell clinical trials, they are looking at diabetic wound, they are looking at uh, Parkinson's, they are looking at Alzheimer. It is clinical trials right now. But what will happen is that there will come a time where it will become standard treatment. And that's where we believe our company's potential is. Uh, as we embark in terms of encouraging mom, you know, please don't throw away those products. Don't treat it like a waste product. Store it with us because it is a powerhouse of possibilities. Yes. Okay, thank you so much for your answer. Now, um, here are some questions coming in from the audience. The first question is, what would you say are your key challenges or opportunities in the new year? I think opportunities are kind of like hush. I think it is very exciting. We have gone a lot online quite a fair bit. And uh, what we are looking at is how it is that we can actually go back to getting mums to, to kind of like bank with us. So that's one thing. Uh, um, and looking at some of the easy measures. Then the second, obviously, is like diagnostics. It has grown quite a fair bit despite the COVID situation. So, so that, that's kind of like make us knowing that definitely we are in the right track. In fact, we have an R&D team in Hong Kong that is doing a lot of this R&D for us that we can bring in tests to the rest of the, the other countries. Challenges, okay, I would say is that um, the COVID-19, not totally out of the book. It's still a kind of like wave. I am very hopeful though, that people start to accept that this is part and live, live with it, how we monitor, but that depends on very individual country. So that, that would be, you know, I'm looking forward to the new year, seeing some of the easing of measure, looking at, let's say the possibility in Singapore, looking at the possibility in Hong Kong, those are our key markets and some of the, the, the drop in the infection rate in, in India. So, and that India is the other key market for us. So it's, it's kind of like very exciting that possibilities. Uh, Bunyong, I don't know whether you have anything to add. Yeah, uh, you have already covered the most, okay. most of the, 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 the key points. You know, I think uh, for us, it's really that uh, we will always look at to see how it could uh, increase the uh, lifetime value of our client. Uh, not just on one point, because at the moment our banking is really dependent on delivery, which is actually a one point. But we want to see how we can continue to uh, meet the needs, the healthcare needs of our client over their pregnancy journey. Before the, you know, uh, before the uh, delivery, at delivery and after delivery. So I think this is where you know, uh, we will continue to uh, look at opportunities and uh, to see how we can introduce more products and services that meets the needs of their uh, pregnancy journey. 
Okay, thank you so much for your answer. The next question is, Cold Life is a fairly illiquid stock. Dividend is not impressive through stable. Uh, price is tied to a narrow range for a longest time. Not an interesting stock for both short to long-term investors. So do you like to hear your opinions on that? Uh, okay, uh, maybe I will just uh, really touch on this. I, I think uh, to, to management, you know, uh, Honestly, we are also equally unhappy with uh, you know, the stock price and the liquidity. I think one of the key reasons is that uh, we are actually operating in a niche segment and our business model is actually not very well understood uh, by the investment public. And that is a reason why you know, if you uh, look at uh, recently, we have been trying to reach out to the investors uh, to uh, make them understand more about our business uh, what are our growth strategies and how are we going to actually uh, continue to grow from where we are now. So I think that part of that uh, uh, reaching out to the investors and uh, telling more about what we do, who we are and how we do in each market, uh, hopefully will be helpful uh, for the investment public to, be, uh, to increase their interest uh, in, our, in our company, in our, in our stock as well. Another thing is also about that, uh, uh, I think we have also talked uh, about uh, trying to, uh, in terms of uh, say the uh, stem cells utilization and also in terms of our uh, product and, uh, and uh, services and uh, that we hope to be able to uh, increase the lifetime value. I think that is something that uh, we will also need uh, sometimes for all these uh, strategies to be uh, executed and to be put in place and for us to be able to uh, realize the full potential because that the uh, stem cell utilization, the ecosystems, this is not something that is happening within a very short time. It will take some time and hopefully that, uh, you know, uh, as we move along and uh, as more of this uh, stem cell utilizations get accepted and uh, as maybe like the standard care or standard treatment, uh, that will also be helpful to us uh, and in terms of uh, some of the strategies that uh, we are rolling out in uh, Singapore and the other countries that we operate. Okay, thank you so much, Wonyoung. Due to the time constraint, we could not answer all the questions from the audience. However, you could still reach out to all of us on the Smart Karma platform. Now, I would hand it back to Vidi to wrap up this webinar. Thank you so much for attending. What an interesting conversation. I mean, uh, it's uh, sad that we have a time constraint, but we do have one. I would like to thank Chris for some very, very interesting questions. Uh, a big thank you to Polan and Bunyong as well for giving us a detailed insight into Cord Life's goals, what you want to achieve, as well as challenges in the sector and you know the opportunity for Cord Life. I would also like to thank our attendees who took the time to join us live. Uh, if your questions were unanswered or if you have any follow-up questions, just like Chris said, feel free to reach out to uh, the speakers through the Smart Karma uh, platform. With this, we would like to wrap up today's webinar. And thanks again. Have a great week ahead. See you next time. Thank you.